first of all, hello, dear colleagues, dear friends. Uh, just thank you for accepting my uh, invitation. And just and uh, we are just and uh, to continue the um, uh, to continue. Uh, to uh, to add some words uh, to Victor's speech, I'd like to say that in our joint publication, we uh, we highlighted the idea of nuclear literacy and nuclear awareness as a uh, as a tool of just um, uh, as a critical societal ass uh, assessment skills to nuclear energy related issues in the context of sustainable development. Urge just which we regarded just and we um, uh, emphasized the uh, Chernobyl uh, Chernobyl nuclear fiction uh, as a tool of uh, of um, fiction uh, as a tool of fictionalizing the history of nuclear technology and uh, other nuclear related uh, issues we regarded nuclear uh, nuclear literacy nuclear awareness within the energy literacy uh, which is um, which is one of the um, which is one of the agencies of contributing to shaping the public or support and developing sustainable energy competences. Uh, actually, uh, energy literacy, um, in our perception, we, um, we regarded energy literacy uh, as, uh, as a broad concept, uh, which uh, has three dimensions, such as knowledge, uh, attitude, and behavior. And now let me just, but today I'm going to speak about nuclear fiction within uh, intermedial eco-criticism, eco which is um, one, uh, which is one of the events organized by Helsinki Environmental Humanities Hub within uh, environmental uh, humanities, uh, humanities, humanity months. Remove S at the very end, please. <laughs> yes, actually, Mm -hmm. As for this uh, presentation is with, uh, within my uh, my huge project within my uh, within my research interests, which are related to the uh, just actually my research is focused on uh, uh, on is focused on literary imaginaries of nuclear energy in North American and East European nuclear fiction within the post Chernobyl age, where I am trying to to research, to investigate the methodological tools of energy narrative studies in the context of energy humanities and environmental humanities with the focus on literary and cultural dimensions of nuclear energy as a social and cultural category uh, of, the, uh, of our energy dependent society. Traditionally, some words about energy humanities. Traditionally, research on energy has been conducted within the natural sciences and engineering. Uh, but the current dependence of the contemporary society on energy and energy sources not only distinguishes its material orientation, but also shapes its values, beliefs, and priorities. And uh, while being on the urge of science and humanities, energy humanities not only remap the geopolitical, ecological factors of energy policy at various levels, but also develops new vocabulary and uh, just such as petroculture, nucleophobia, nuclear identity, energy liberation, plutonium economy, and many others, and methodological tools to reconsider the and her energetic history of the of humanity to shape its energetic past and to just try to predict the, its energetic uh, future. The Anthropocene calls for new, new narratives and the literary perspective on energy storytelling helps to distinguish such energy uh, related fictional writings, writings as uh, Petra, uh, Petra fiction, nuclear fiction, which as is under uh, study in my research, carbon fiction, hydro fiction, climate fiction, and even Anthropocene, uh, Anthropocene fiction. But what about? Uh, but what about the? Uh, 
just the folly in one or uh, just the current the current narratives uh, or uh, the current narratives uh, nuclear narratives vary from nuclear optimism to nuclear uh, violence and toxic ge uh, and toxic uh, geographies on one hand nuclear is considered to be a part of sustainable clean energy but on the other hand um, nuclear is an invisible but overwhelming evil, or as uh, Lana Arif says, it is the good, the bad, and first of all, the debatable. That's why nuclear, nuclear, nuclearity, nuclear aesthetic, nuclear hum humanities, radioactive discourse, nuclear communication, nuclear diplomacy, all these and other uh, constant terms confirm the debatable nature of uh, nuclear energy related issues nowadays. Mm -hmm. But what? Uh, but what? Uh, what is the role, nature, function of fi fictional writing uh, on energy-related humanities issues? This debatable character of national of debatable character, debatable um, nature of uh, nuclear debates. Uh, is based over results in emoting uh, nuclear energy and which can be um, just which can be explained with def just with some uh, with which can in, uh, include some uh, some factors. First of all, it is personal energy uh, story related to nuclear era, to nuclear issues, uh, depending on the context, on the uh, uh, depending on the context, on the location, on the uh, just on their experience, just related to nuclear disaster or energy nuclear energy production or nuclear uh, nuclear waste. Then the following one, it is the, the following factor, it is amalgamation of nuclear energy narratives and atomic bomb narratives. Even I am trying to separate these narratives, uh, just this issue about separation or, or, or amalgamation of these, uh, of these narratives, this issue still under the debate, under the de de has the debatable character. But uh, just I can, uh, I am trying to uh, just to focus my uh, research on nuclear energy uh, narratives and uh, just and. Uh, in this concern, I guess what makes uh, what makes uh, nuclear energy narratives related to uh, the atomic bomb, atomic war narratives, it is so called the contamination discourse. And in this aspect, I'd like to uh, refer to uh, the works by Jeremy Radlich. Uh, just about the contamination discourse, where he he speaks about uh, about the amalgamation of nuclear narratives. Uh, the following one, it is intergenerational memory response to nuclear disasters and nuclear, any other nuclear, uh, nuclear events. Uh, the following one, it is nuclear it, uh, in, uh, informational trauma while having the, while uh, being in distance, uh, uh, in, while having the personal distance to uh, nuclear energy related um, events, we judge them uh, under the influence of the, uh, under the uh, influence of the informational, uh, of the informational space. The following one, it is the readiness for the secrecy of nuclear knowledge, which is based on the Cold War resulted from the Cold War experience. And the following one, it is the so-called Chernobyl syndrome, the a shift from nuclear uh, optimism to nuclear phobia. Maybe something else. I just something else. Just I hope uh, I hope my research will help me to will help me to distinguish the factors which make nuclear energy to be emoted. Mm -hmm. But what uh, just about uh, nuclear fi nuclear fiction is regarded as a just in my research is regarded as a fictional storytelling on nuclear energy related uh, issues uh, through the literary conceptualization of nuclear energy and um, nuclear energy and nuclear energy related issues. Uh, 
uh, defining the uh, uh, shaping the nuclear narratives and defining nuclear energy as a debatable societal value. I'm not going to uh, today to speak about the components which make the uh, nuclear fiction. Uh, but uh, I'd like to just to count some uh, of them and stress your uh, and uh, just to list them and say that uh, nuclear fiction, mm, nuclear fiction has the if we are speaking about nuclear energy fiction, um, we are it has the component of interviews and memoirs. The storyline is the storyline is based on is based on the interviews and memoirs and real and just and documentary uh, and document uh, and documentary uh, effects nuclear fiction uh, includes a component of scientific non-fiction when the uh, when the nuclear uh, when uh, novels poems uh, re uh, just when nuclear fictional uh, writing represents the has the component of uh, science and provides the readers with some information about the nature of nuclear energy and uh, any other uh, process. Nuclear fiction has the component of investigative narrative because the uh, protagonists try to understand what happened, how just uh, why uh, something happened, why this, uh, what can be the result of this or that uh, uh, activity. Mm, just near and anti pastoral uh, narratives are uh, usually represented by the uh, by the description of uh, of the environment post apocalyptic narrative and the most important the politicized narrative are uh, just any nuclear nuclear uh, fictional writing is a country uh, is a contribution to uh, to energy uh, narratives were of uh, to politicized uh, energy narrative. Mm -hmm. As for the theoretical framework of uh, my research, I your um, the methodological frameworks of my research include the outcomes. Uh, first of all, yes, I started uh, many years ago from nuclear criticism uh, and it's um, uh, the most uh, debatable statement or, uh, 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 made or just said by Derrida about the um, about the fabulous textual nature of uh, of a nuclear event. He says that the, any nuclear uh, event is known a uh, any nuclear event is is just a talk. It is a known event. And yes, on one hand, the nuclear events are. Uh, on one hand, the nuclear history of the humanity have has changed its uh, uh, has has changed the, its fictional character. But on the, on the other hand, the nuclear history confirms the distance, the uh, the separation to the uh, the personal separation from the nuclear technologies, nuclear uh, nuclear energy related issues. But this, uh, but uh, the impression just but the uh, the public opinion about uh, about the um, about nuclear energy is shaped by the mainly by the informational space, but not the uh, by not the personal experience. The other just the other uh, works which are uh, the other um, aspect there just I use the works on uh, geo criticism where literature is regarded as a source in of environmental knowledge and helping or uh, just mediated knowledge about all of spatial reality uh, then uh -huh, now the but nowadays I am focused on the literary energy on the uh, literary energy narrative uh, studies uh, initiated by your, just launched by Axel Goodbody and works on energy literature by, by Imre uh, Zeman, who two years ago was our guest. Just actually uh, referring to Imre Zeman, it is literature with each, its 
focus on easy access to energy plays a second or just plays a secondary role in history by in comparison with human intellect and the adventure of uh, progress. Uh, Imre Zeman highlights that uh, literature can be of the factors of shaping the contemporary uh, the contemporary social narratives. He uh, said, uh, he outlines that the function of literature uh, that shapes our current perspective on energy as economical and political concept and on the unlimited access to energy resources by neglecting the role of energy and energy resources in the formation of our value of our values paradigm uh, and by ignoring the dependence of the periodization of the literary history literary forms and styles on the energy history and humanity and by shaping the post-apocalyptic scenarios for the future but just i but um why, but uh, also one of the uh, just on the one of the uh, theoretical frames which uh, helped me to uh, make the research it is the uh, just and I started actually uh, uh, with uh, I began my research uh, career from eco critical studies but when I was in uh, just but when I saw um, when I was involved in some activities conducted by the uh, conducted by the research team uh, conducted by the research team um, headed by uh, headed by Jorgen uh, Brand uh, from the University of Linux, uh, Linux uh, University uh, and the Center for Intermedial and Multi uh, Multimodal Studies. Uh, the, uh, the project Intermedial Ecocriticism uh, eco Transmediating the Anthropocene attracted my attention and when I uh, just tried to um, just end after being involved in the activity it is i understand that it that uh, that was uh, it is intermediate eco criticism what i really what i really need uh, Jurgen Brand, with his uh, just with his teams, tries uh, with his his team tries to combine insights from intermediate studies and eco criticism with uh, with inter environmental humanities. It is uh, just even being uh, literary, uh, just being focused on literary analysis, on the literary representation, uh, the very heterogeneous field of eco criticism today includes the analysis of many other uh, practices and uh, as, uh, aesthetic practices and media types. Uh, types of non-literary media uh, is investigated from the uh, from the way of a eco critic eco critical perspective includes fictional experimental documentary films uh, gaming the um, the visual arts museology and the sounds effects and um, mm -hmm. Along with the energy humanities and climate change narratives, the focus on intermediate eco criticism as the approach to uh, communicating the energy sector and our uh, agenda via different media products, different media types, helps to distinguish the toolkit of translating scientific material across the media borders to where people learn what the scientists or sciences are doing. Mm -hmm. it, if there, if there uh, communication of scientific uh, effects needs or uh, uh, is to have some kind of impact, the effects need to be pers uh, personalized or emotionalized, which is uh, a key moment of, uh, of my presentation. Uh, Intermediate, intermediate eco criticism, or just intermediate or eco criticism, appears to be productive and even necessary development in studying links between science, society, environment uh, within the field of eco, uh, eco criticism in particular and the environmental humanities in general. Mm -hmm. 
this moment I'm for just these novels are in the uh, just are in the focus of my research, not only this, but any artists, but uh, just for this presentation, I'm, I used to this one, uh, just they belong to so called uh, Chernobyl fiction, even but uh, the novels written by North American North American writers, uh, even uh, they cover the fictional storytelling by uh, the fiction uh, the uh, fictional storytelling by in their interviews comments in uh, introduction the writers highlight the uh, fictional nature of their novels. Mm -hmm. And if we speak about uh, components which may just their uh, motives and components about uh, just of Chernobyl fictional writing, you can see the list of those uh, those um, those uh, components which uh, it is possible to find in all the in all those um, Chernobyl fiction Chernobyl uh, fiction. Uh, just here they are. Mm -hmm. Uh, just they have, just they highlight their, uh, uh, they highlight the motive of victimization, uh, just and um, usually protagonists are people who were the victim or who are the victim of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant explosion. Monsterization of the Chernobyl and, uh, uh, and um, Chernobyl and uh, the exclusion zone. Uh, this no, uh, this novel shows or uh, demonstrates the shift from the global to no uh, to local narrative, uh, to local narrative by uh, uh, by focusing the uh, attention on describing a typical urban serv uh, Soviet uh, site. They demonstrate the shift from the geo uh, geopolitical to ecological narratives. I wanted. To to write more. Okay, uh, just then, uh, the, the Chernobyl fictional writing, they represent a huge piece of abandoned urban area against the flour uh, flourishing uh, nature. The protagonists seek the truth and uh, they uh, seek the truth, which coincide, coincided with the launch of uh, so-called glassness, the launch uh, of this uh, of this process after the collapse of the Soviet Union, which is represented with this novels as the um, collapse of the Soviet regime, a regime which is represented in this novels as a symbolic tomb of the uh, Soviet Union. Uh, they highlight the collective responsibility of the collective responsibility of the um, of the protagonist. At least the writers or uh, the writers uh, uh, make the um, help uh, help protagonist to ask about the about the responsibility, person collective responsibility for the happened event. And all these novels uh, include the uh, all the, uh, these novels uh, include the component of the uh, represents the uh, in exclusion zone culture uh, with uh, just uh, exclusion, uh, exclusion zone culture and zone tourism. Mm -hmm. One of the moments by, by emoting the nuclear, uh, by emoting the, the nuclear disaster and its aftermath, very often writers appeal by narrating the nuclear disaster and its aftermath, the writers appeal to emoting nuclear uh, energy and celestalgia is one of the key concepts which helps to, uh, which helps, which encourage the personalization of uh, factual, uh, personalization of the factual component. Celestalgia um, is regarded as a distress uh, that is produced by environmental change impacting on people while they are directly connected to their uh, home environment. And um, Glenn uh, Albrecht, just he, uh, he is the uh, just he is that one or uh, that scholar who who launched this? Uh, who, as he said, I he, who created that uh, this concept, and uh, he oh, just a moment, maybe, mm -hmm. and uh, he um, 
just he explains or just he tries to uh, to separate or just to uh, to distinguish Celestel. Uh, he, he tries he manages to try to uh, to separate Celestelgia and nostalgia while uh, uh, while focusing on the or on the um, focusing uh, on the point that celestalgia is related to the spatial or uh, spatial dimensions while nostalgia um, is uh, related to the to the dislocated spatial and temporal dimensions uh, <laughs> dimensions but celestalgia results in the uh, results in the attack on um, on sense of place in the destruction of sense of belonging, identity to particular place and a feeling of distress, psychological desolation about its transformation. And it is an uh, intense desire for the place where, uh, just, uh, uh, where one is a resident to be manipulated in a state uh, that continues, that stops uh, to give comfort and comfort. Mm -hmm. About the uh, just that so. Uh -huh. Uh, yes, there are there, uh, there is a diversity of factors triggering celestalgia, including uh, extreme weather event, uh, resource uh, extraction, and political wine, uh, violence. But uh, in all these environment, all these environmental factors are described as cumulative, compounding, imposed, unwelcome, unwanted, dramatic and negative even i am trying to uh, to avoid the words positive and in, in negative in my research but uh, but um, uh, Glenn Elbrof highlights the the negative uh, the negative uh, the negative experience of uh, the negative as the um, characteristic feature uh, of experiencing environmental environmental changes in terms of understanding how uh, celestalgia is con uh, con concept conceptualized and, uh, and uh, applied, I try to explore the literary dimension celestalgia through the intermediate uh, nature of uh, emoting a nuclear disaster by amalgamating the factual and fiction the factual and fictional uh, components are in nuclear in nuclear fiction mm -hmm. but what happened with but what happened with the with the uh, just with celestial when we speak about when we speak about uh, when we speak about uh, when we deal with nuclear when we deal with the nuclear uh, nuclear fiction as for uh, the um, just a moment mm -hmm. as for the um, as for the fictional component celestia accompanied uh, with such just a moment uh -huh, with such emotions as ecological grief anxiety, uh, terror, trauma, top of failure, or just and uh, any others. But okay, what happens when Celestelgia referring to the distress of environmental change when we deal with narrating the nuclear power ex plant explosion and its aftermath? Which factors contribute to celestalgia defining the link between human and ecosystem in a whole and resulted from, um, uh, from the cumulative impact of environmental change on mental, emotional, and spiritual or, and spiritual health? As for these novels. Yes, in these novels, we can see that at the first stage of uh, experiencing experience nuclear explosion aftermath, the environmental changes lead to having distress, uh, resulted from deforestation, buried forest, soil destruction, ruined environment, biodiversity loss, pollution, resulting in experiential nostalgia, along with uh, along with uh, sadness uh, related to degra uh, degraded landscapes and worries about uh, losing the valued uh, aspects of place, 
clean water and uh, and scenery the protagonist experience the range of emotions such as fear uncertainty related to the forced displacement and the collapse of value paradigm having the social and political background they were happy Mm -hmm. They were happy to be a part of the working organism, supporting the functioning of nuclear uh, nuclear infrastructure and atom for peace uh, uh, complex. But suddenly their sense of belonging to the system changed, uh, leaving them in despair, stress and uncertainty. All the protagonists of these novels, physical or in their reflections, they come back to zone, the exclusion zone legally or illegally uh, for various reasons, to check their, uh, their dwelling place, to write a journal article, to find out their family roots, to go through experiencing the nuclear event and clarifying their spiritual changes, or just to live after their uh, failing and uh, to start a new uh, life in a new dwelling place after forced displacement, after forced dis displacement. And works they just a moment, and what they see, uh, it is the abundant wild nature with flourishing uh, forest and uh, flourishing forest and uh, origin uh, and original nature. The paradoxical situ uh, situation, uh -huh. the fear, the fear and uncertainty, uncertainty, uncertainty based on the lack of information and awareness and the lack of crisis situational regulations altogether uh, enlarge the unknown, uncontrolled danger and create the image of radiation as invisible, uh, as invisible monster. Um, under such, uh, under such circumstances, any change is uh, regarded by the society as uh, evil, as atrocity, or any change lead to oppositional uh, activities resulted in fighting uh, with their enemy. In our case, it is in invisible, uh, invisible enemy radiation or, and, or nuclear as its mater materialization. It is the nuclear power plant. Mm -hmm. That's why emoting celestialgia in nuclear or uh, in nuclear uh, fiction is related to the following uh, to the following uh, to the following features: sadness, loss, uh, missing, uh, distressed of uh, distressed of uh, after uh, after experiencing the environmental change. Living in the end of times, low violence, the age of vulnerability, all together, just and doom or uh, and um, uh, the doom clock with its setting. Uh, again, the apocalyptic debates on climate change and their natural and human-made ecological disasters encourage the situation when these fears doomed living apocalyptic perspective and eco-pessimism uh, face the nuclear the, and that all results in nuclear phobia with its uh, domain, uh, dominating lack of personal reference lack of personal reference to the nuclear to nuclear uh, to nuclear disaster uh, in, uh, mm -hmm. but what is the way out and just this, uh, just basing on the, uh, just basing on the, but how to avoid this apocalyptic rhetoric in fictionalizing, in fictionalizing a nuclear disaster? In our case, it is Chernobyl disaster. While basing on uh, the wor the works by um, uh, by Ernst Bloch, Christoph Mau uh, Mauch, and um, and Bob uh, Rob Nixon uh, just they all together they uh, they try to uh, they try to um, uh, focus attention on regarding on regarding any crisis any fear and uncertainty as a starting point for as a starting point for uh, for change narrative just and really we can see that all the novels uh, just which are under study in my research after 
uh, the, uh, the protagonist of those novels experiencing di uh, uh, distrust, disappointment, fear, and hatred, uh, they switch to uh, they switch to curiosity and investigation because they try to understand what happened, what is the reason, uh, what is uh, uh, what happened, and the nature of uh, the of uh, the events happening. Uh, the next step, which uh, which helps to change from uh, from uh, emoting, uh, which helps to change the apocalyptic uh, apocalyptic rhetoric in, in fictionalizing fictionalizing a nuclear disaster is a change narrative is survival narrative uh, uh, when these novels these old novels try to survive that survival is possible the exclusion zone border is not so or is no strict as it uh, as uh, it is uh, um, it is uh, spoken about and it is it is transparent uh, this survival survival narrative uh, include, includes the social engagement and uh, uh, while and um, yes, the um, and the simulation of experience even of those even those who were not involved in experiencing the uh, the uh, in experiencing the nuclear uh, nuclear trauma uh, nuclear disaster they go through under the influence of the informational space they go through the simulation of the experience and the most important and the most important um, fact it is the most important fact it is knowledge uh, nuclear knowledge management which can be presented as data storytelling and nuclear uh, nuclear literacy or any energy literacy as we have just mentioned today uh, when uh, yes, these novels even having the fictional uh, fictional character they provide they in or uh, in some ways they provide their knowledge related to the uh, to the nature of nuclear energy and uh, and nuclear technology mm -hmm. the but uh, mm -hmm. The, the factual information which is used in these novels uh, creates the spatial uh, creates not only spatial spatial temporal setting of uh, of uh, fictional storytelling but also can be regarded uh, but also give a chance to regard nuclear fiction as the uh, as the, um, uh, the archive of nuclear of nuclear knowledge uh, just actually the amalgamation the uh, um, the um, no the the, uh, with the dominating motives of victimization and monsterization uh, of uh, nuclear uh, of in the nu in nuclear fiction with the shift from global to local uh, um, perspective from geopolitical to ecological factors the amalgamation of of fictional and, fact uh, and uh, factual components represent not only the historical and material context of, on the, of the events, but also provide the coverage of social and cultural components and clarify the public opinion on the nuclear accident while making, by, while making the full picture of the event happening. But at the same time, the uh, uncritical approach you, uh, to, you, uh, to using the factual component of uh, memoirs and other factual, uh, factual components is quite dangerous because of the, uh, because of the personal and even unbiased, uh, and even, uh, unbiased uh, attitude comments uh, uh, of, the, uh, of, uh, of narrating the events. Such the, the, uh, the amalgamation on fictional and uh, and um, fiction, uh, fictional and factual components helps to fill the uh, the gap in new pro in nuclear knowledge but at the same time it helps to uh, to uh, erase to uh, to blur the border between fictional and non-fictional and non-fictional um, writings for example the uh, just and even more, while describing the situation, while the describing the events happening in, in Chernobyl, uh, for example, um, in the novel Bombshell, uh, Bombshell by Reich, uh, the spatial 
um, the storyline represents the events that are happening in Chernobyl, but the writer gives spatial temporal components of narrating United uh, of narrating the American uh, the American nuclear history. Uh, we are just by your uh, by uh, by describing the lo uh, locations where which uh, the protagonist uh, his protagonist uh, visitor it is possible to create the map of the uh, the map of uh, nuclear industry of uh, united states mm -hmm. and uh, yes, and even more there uh, just no um, uh -huh. as for intermediality to avoid uh, the intermediate character of the uh, of uh, the of the provided information uh, of the um, describing the intermediate character of uh, of narrating uh, uh, a nuclear disaster in this event or uh, also uh, or, um, also is uh, uh, also is represented by including the uh, other uh, just uh, the other media in the novels by the writers first of all i'd like to i have just mentioned about the novel bombshell by ray who, who included the map of the map of uh, locations related to uh, nuclear uh, nuclear industry of the united states uh, the um, the protagonist of Radiant, uh, the novel Radiant Girl by Andrea White, they play your, uh, uh, they play st stalker and describe their uh, just this uh, video game stalker and uh, compare the uh, and compare the impressions uh, and compare the events, uh, their own personal experience with their uh, with uh, what they can see in this uh, in this. Um, Again, and even Frederick Paul, uh, Paul, uh, Paul in his uh, in one of the edition, uh, one of one of the edition um, of his novel uh, of his novel Chernobyl was accompanied by uh, by photos. Even he highlights the fictional character of his uh, of his um, of his uh, novel. Regarding to uh, regarding to the. Um, uh, to, uh, to my research interest, to my research project, very often I, uh, uh, not very often, sometimes I give comments about uh, about the fictional component of uh, HBO serial, mini serial Chernobyl. And I try to uh, just, yes, I have already just have while basing on the interviews uh, and uh, interviews publications of those of those who witness the uh, nuclear power plant explosion and if i uh, this aftermath, uh, I uh, can uh, focus attention on that components which were uh, which were fictional in the novel. Just for example, if you can see, if it is possible to see the top right uh, right hand corner, just people are standing you know, on the uh, on the so called uh, the bridge of death. They were not uh, just it was a fictional moment. Actually, people uh, didn't at the moment of the explosion. People didn't go to that breach, uh, uh, bre uh, death of breach to witness the, uh, to witness the explosion. And the uh, children were at that night, at the moment of the explosion, p uh, children were not, uh, uh, just didn't, uh, didn't enjoy the glittering, the glittering, uh, uh, the glittering dust. What else? People, just it was impossible to, uh, just opposite to the uh, to the uh, events described uh, represented by this uh, by this mini uh, serial uh, it was impossible to smoke in the uh, controlling in the controlling room uh, as it was um, shown in uh, the movie and the minister didn't arrive to with two armed um, soldiers to push uh, miners uh, to push um, to encourage mine to push miners to uh, go to the Chernobyl and to participate in the rescue events and miners didn't work naked. But actually the main idea was not to uh, just while replying, the, just while describing these uh, mismatches, the idea was not to find the so-called mistakes which were made by the uh, by the um, 
um, by their uh, film uh, filmmakers. But the main idea was to focus uh, uh, to fo uh, to uh, to explain that uh, it is the fiction uh, fictional components which encourage the emotion or uh, the emotion of nuclear events. Mm -hmm. And while fiction. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me use this because I have just mentioned about the that in the, uh, uh, I have just mentioned about the uh, when we speak about nuclear fiction, it is impossible to uh, to separate uh, the fictional and the factual component. And we even we speak about the speculative uh, uh, speculative um, uh, fiction about the uh, just on related to nuclear events. They are based on experiencing not experiencing. They are based on the. Uh, uh, on the um, uh, previous on the nuclear uh, on the nuclear history of uh, the humanity and in conclusion i'd like to um, i'd like to say that just actually it is celestalgia which uh, uh -huh. Uh, it is a, it is celestia which helps to uh, which one of the key notes which helps to understand the uh, uh, to understand the uh, ways of emoting nuclear nuclear disaster, nuclear and its aftermath in nuclear fiction. Uh, it is celestalgia, according to or just referring to uh, Glenn Albrecht, it is celestalgia which uh, helps to uh, which will help to make the emotional one of the uh, one of the tools which will help to make the uh, jump from the uh, from the uh, anthropocene to symbiocene but i'm still in the uh, i am still um, but this uh, this notion is still under research in my year uh, in my project and uh, just when we speak about uh, if we when we speak about uh, nuclear fiction as the uh, fictional storytelling uh, just here i'd like to uh, here i'd like to uh, i'd like to um, highlight that uh, storytelling is regarded uh, a fictional storytelling nuclear fiction as a kind of storytelling uh, is regarded uh, just is regarded as a way of understanding communicating and influence others in our case we are speaking about the uh, um, we are speaking about shaping the public opinion or public opinion about the nuclear include uh, enter uh, this way of this way of uh, this nuclear energy related uh, related uh, stories uh, they include uh, just represented by nuclear story uh, nuclear storytelling includes not only the data uh, data storytelling not only the evidence or uh, interpretation of evidence but also includes the component of performance uh, for uh, for storytelling is for nuclear storytelling uh, it is important to know the context which whom the uh, who just in our case who are reading the uh, who reads the novel who are the audience the target audience of the novels who writes the novels and in uh, what context actually all this i totally re uh, realize the idea that all the novels about about them uh, all the novels on uh, Chernobyl written by the uh, North American writers, they are written for, uh, for, Anglo for Anglophone uh, readers. And their task is, while describing the events happening in Chernobyl, to focus their attention on the, to focus readers' attention on the nuclear history of the United States and uh, not history, but also the nuclear present of the United States. Uh -huh. In uh, just uh, in future, I am going to join the just now. I have the years of joining uh, of uh, collaborating the intermediate um, uh, the outcomes of intermediate eco critical studies, energy storytelling, and now I am interested in uh, applying theory of uh, change of narrative uh, in uh, just to see how it works in how it works in nuclear fiction. And please contact me if you have some ideas for uh, for uh, our joint uh, joint uh, at, uh, at and uh, for our joint publications so many are uh, just all researchers uh, just uh, 
first coming aha uh -huh, at this event i am going to uh, i am going to make my presentation they are happening in the they are happening in the nearest future and where i will just uh, and at these uh, events i am uh, going to speak about uh, i'm going to speak about emoting uh, nuclear energy on the example of the uh, of the um, uh, chernobyl uh, Cherno nuclear fiction and chernobyl in particular uh, just my, the recent publication, just these ideas, these publications can be can be found in this uh, in these books. Uh, I contributed to this. Uh, I contributed to this uh, uh, to these um, uh, to these editions, and uh, they can be found in our uh, in our library. What else? It is the chapters which are now are under consideration and there are some of them and which I'm writing now and I hope they will be published. That's all. Thank you for just for your time. I 